you how to improvise a traction splint. In this case, we're going to show an example of if we're in a wilderness setting, and this is Evan, if Evan had fallen down and fractured his femur, we're going to want to be able to get that leg in traction and then put it into a traction splint. So the first thing we've done is we know we have a fractured femur, and so Peter has sat down and he's pulling gentle traction in line. So he's just he's made himself comfortable on the ground because he's going to be there for a while now. He's just sitting and he's just leaning back his upper body weight, and in the process he's now stretching this leg, and that's going to help relax the muscles and get that under control. Then I need to convert his manual traction to mechanical traction. So I'm going to improvise the traction splint. So we need to, we need a long stick to begin with. I'm going to use an expanding ski pole. I'm just going to stretch this out to its maximum length. And that's going to run down the outside of the leg. And eventually, we're going to convert traction onto that. To achieve this, I need to first anchor the ski pole at his waist. A mug from Solo that has how to put a traction split on it. I'm going to slide it over the top, but I could also have used the, the hand grip that's already here for the ski pole. But just for sake of argument, I'll do that. I could even use this belt if I wanted to to help anchor that in place. But in this case, I'm going to slide a cravat right underneath the small Evans back. And then through the handle of the cup. And I might even go through the loop of his belt here. Just to help hold it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. A simple knot. And then, the next cravat, I need to prevent that from sliding up. So I'm going to slide a cravat under his leg careful not to jostle that fracture site too much. And that's going to come up and again go through the handle of our little mug. And a nice little knot. So now when we pull traction that can't slide up past there. Now I've got to be able to convert traction on that end. So I'm going to work around Peter's hands because we want to do our best not to release traction if possible. And you can use an S hitch here or you can use a sprained ankle bandage. Whatever you prefer. I personally prefer a little bit. Of the, I like to use a sprained ankle bandage. So I'm just going to wrap this around. I want to end up with a loop right down the center of the small of his foot. Now, the shoe's been left in place, but you're going to have to make a decision. That's going to be up to you, depending on the situation. The advantage of leaving the shoe on is when I pull traction now through this loop, all the weight of my bandage comes onto the shoe. It helps prevent this bandage from shutting off circulation of the foot. The disadvantage, though, is I can't see his toes now. I cannot evaluate this foot for warmth or coldness. In the ideal world, you take the shoe off, you'd insulate this, and then put your sprained ankle bandage on. So we got that in place. Now, go all the way down here. Just using a cravat. Just gonna wrap it around the pole a few times. Tie a simple overhand knot. Then I'm just gonna simply try just another knot. In this case, I'm just using a square knot, just to simply make a loop. So now I'm going to convert, I'm going to make mechanical traction. In this case, I'm just going to use a piece of orange P cord. I'm going to slide this in place underneath the saddle of that sprained ankle bandage at the base of Evan's foot. Put a little figure eight knot in the end so that I can pull through. Then I'm going to come up to my little loop I made here. Now, essentially, I've made a nice little trucker's hitch, a nice little mechanical advantage. So now I can gently pull, and I can take over that. Now, Peter should be able to kind of gently slide out. Thank you, Peter. And now I've got mechanical advantage. So I can just snug, just snug this up so that I'm not pulling any harder than Peter's pulling. Now I'm just going to tie it off so that'll stay in place. Evan, is that comfortable? You okay? Yes. Excellent. So now I've got the leg pulled nice and straight. 
My traction splint runs down right through the center of the leg. The foot's standing up straight for me, fortunately, holding everything still. The last thing I need to do now is I want to create, I want to make this into one full splint, one full cast. I could use a bunch of cravats. Just start tying this on. Gently wrap one at the ankle. Put some padding in here right through the whole length of the leg. But the thing we really like to do in the ideal world is that a fractured femur wants to bleed a great deal internally. You, you're on the average, you're going to lose about 1,500 cc's of blood into that fracture site. So I'm going to put a little bit of gentle padding between that traction split in his leg, and then I'm going to wrap his whole leg with, some, with a couple ace bandages. So I'm going to start at the ankle. And now that we've got him under traction, we can even gently lift the leg up. We want to. Peter, want to give me a hand for a second? So we're going to gently lift his foot at the ankle. But as we do that, we have to also support the fracture side here so the leg does not sag at the fracture. And then someone could take an ace bandage, which in all this wind that came unwrapped, we'll just roll it back up quickly. Beautiful spring day, nice and warm. It doesn't have to be wrapped really tight. Just a nice, gentle wrap. that in there for a second. The same thing, we're going to take another one. And a nice wrap. Notice we're wrapping the entire leg, not just the upper leg, but the entire leg. Right up over the fracture site. Thank you, Peter. last one. Same idea, starting up high. Just gonna gently wrap this right up through. Just as high as I can get it. Excellent. And then we're just gonna tuck that, we we'll tape that in place so I couldn't unwrap. So now we've got the leg in traction, we're applying gentle traction, so as the muscles try to spasm as it's resisting it, that helps control the bleeding. We've now wrapped this with the compression bandages to help it control the bleeding into the site. And if we need to, we'd put padding between the two legs and gently support the legs together. And then we'd package him up and he's ready to be carried out. So this is an example of a traction splint for fractured femur or for long carryouts, you could also do the exact same thing for a fractured lower leg. So support the leg really, really well during a carryout. So there we go. April 24th, 2008, here in the Mount Washington Valley on a beautiful spring day. Hope you learned something. We'll see you again next month. Thanks. Bye.